This is CBS. Coming up next on the night beat, a new twist in the plan to bring the Patriots to Connecticut, but apparently everyone won't play along. Congress loosens its grip on the millions of dollars needed to keep the Seawolf submarine afloat. An investment giant is caught holding some bad deals, and the payback to consumers will reach into the hundreds of millions. I'm Don Lark. Denise is off tonight. It's all coming up next on the night beat. Next, Eyewitness News Night Beat. All the news you need to know for tonight and tomorrow. It comes specially equipped with dual airbags, cruise control, air conditioning, four-speaker AM, FM, cassette stereo, and power accessories like luxury sedans costing twice the money. The 1994 Nissan Altima GXE. It not only defines what a luxury car should be, it redefines what a luxury car should cost. Lease the Altima for just $750 down and $229 a month for 36 months. When you watch TV, everyone wants a good seat. Yes, Mr. Oates. But when you're crowded, things can get a little out of control. Nobody Beats the Wiz has a better idea. The civilized way to watch TV. With a Panasonic super flat TV, Every seat is a great seat, and the flat screen picture will blow your mind. Yeah. So get civilized. Pick up a Panasonic super flat TV. On sale it, nobody beats the Wiz. The year 2032. The city, Los Angeles. The movie, Demolition Man. The restaurant. Now all restaurants are Taco Bell. Exacto. The demo deal. Buy a burrito supreme. Nachos. And a large drink for one low price and get an official Demolition Man movie poster absolutely free. I'm impressed. The supply is limited. The conclusion, get to Taco Bell today. Here are tonight's Connecticut and Massachusetts lottery numbers. Count on them at 11 each night, right before Eyewitness News Nightbeat. Tonight, a new equation in the push to bring the Patriots to Connecticut. From WFSB Channel 3, you're watching Eyewitness News Nightbeat at 11. Good evening, I'm Don Lark, and what's happening tonight may be the first fumble in the push for the Patriots. Channel 3's Barbara Pinto reports the man behind the plan found a new approach, but the owner of the Patriots, James Orthwine, has turned him down. Call the latest pass by Francis Murray incomplete. The former Patriots owner and current president of the New England NFL Partnership offered Patriots owner James Bush Orthwine a swap of sorts. Murray said he'd give Orthwine the $140 million he needs to bring an expansion team to St. Louis if Orthwine would give Murray control of the Patriots. But Orthwine's lawyer said today he's not interested. He wants to be a limited partner only with no other role in St. Louis. He wants to support the expansion team and he wants to get the New England Patriots sold through Goldman and Sachs and not through Fran Murray. It would be, I think, really uh, uh, irresponsible not to give uh, this, this plan uh, its due because it's well-conceived and it's, it's in his uh, primary interest and it's, uh, it serves the league and serves uh, uh, two markets uh, very, very well. Murray, who plans to bring the Patriots to Hartford, heard about Orthwine's reaction during a phone interview with Channel 3's Dave Smith earlier today. Is there any possibility he might be trying to freeze out the group in St. Louis and just keep this entirely for himself? Well, I don't know what his motivations are, but uh, I would hope that is not his motive. Connecticut and its fans are poised to receive the Patriots. The state even says it will set aside $250 million to build a stadium here. But if St. Louis doesn't get the franchise next week, Orthwine could move the Patriots to St. Louis, mixing deals with St. Louis investors and investors right here in Hartford. Barbara Pinto, Channel 3 Eyewitness News on the night beat. Fran Murray also said tonight he has alternative plans to bring the Patriots to Hartford, but he would not elaborate on what those plans are. Tonight, Electric Boat is one big step closer to finalizing the deal for a third Seawolf submarine. The Pentagon releases $540 million for construction of the submarine, a project that's critical for the workers in Groton and for the economy of southeastern Connecticut. Total funding for the project, which may total $2.4 billion, still has to win congressional approval, but the money released tonight is earmarked specifically to support the nuclear submarine industry. 
which Electric Boat is taking as a very favorable sign. A second witness testifies that Connecticut's former Republican Party chairman, Richard Foley, took $25,000 in monthly payoffs in exchange for Foley's promise to swing some votes on a banking bill. Foley claims the two witnesses, former bankers John Corpassi and Richard Barberi, paid him consulting fees to help them find tenants for a shopping mall in Naugatuck. Corpassi and Barberi say the words consulting fee in Waterbury at the time had become another word to say the words payoff. Both witnesses, Corpassi and Barberi, were convicted in the Waterbury corruption scandal. Comptroller William Curry's announcement that he's running for governor today makes it a three-way race for the Democratic nomination. The state's chief financial officer for three years, Curry's been a relentless critic of Governor Weicker's budget numbers and says he'll run on his record. In my job, I have worked to lower health care costs, to modernize bureaucracy, and to cut government red tape. Most important, I have done what the people of this state elected me to do. I have told the truth as I know it, and I have stood my ground. Democrats John Larson and Richard Balducci are also going after the nomination. Paul Marquito, the man accused of strangling his wife in Brantford earlier this week, may have been stalking her since she moved out of their apartment in East Haven three weeks ago. Four days before he allegedly attacked her, he was stopped and questioned early in the morning by a Brantford police officer who spotted him walking near his wife's condominium complex. 23-year-old Catherine Marquito was attacked and strangled not far away sometime Tuesday morning. Marquito turned himself into police a few hours after her body was found. Army helicopter pilot Michael Durant released from captivity in Somalia one week ago, undergoing surgery to pin his broken right leg. It's one of the stories making news around America tonight. The surgery at a Fort Campbell, Kentucky Army hospital. Durant's right thigh bone was broken when his helicopter was shot down during the firefight in Somalia October 3rd, which left 18 American soldiers dead. He also suffered a broken vertebra in his lower back and a broken left cheekbone. Somali gunmen held him captive for 11 days. In Kentucky, the gunman who killed three civilian co-workers at Fort Knox earlier this week died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound as the victims were being laid to rest today. 53-year-old Arthur Hill shot himself hours after the killings. He died without regaining consciousness. Farmers and Unions Against the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, stage a huge rally in Washington, and some took their complaints right to Capitol Hill. Among them, a Pratt & Whitney union official who warned that with NAFTA, U.S. aviation and manufacturing plants will be moved to Mexico because of the cheap labor there. Our wage standards are going to go down. Our living standards are going to go down. The NAFTA vote in Congress is less than a month away. Leaders from both sides of the aisle say right now it is too close to call. Well, the rain tonight is over, and it will be drier tomorrow, but Hilton is standing by at the New England Weather Service to tell us we'll still need a coat. Hilton? Oh, Don, uh, tomorrow looks kind of blustery. Live Connecticut Doppler 3 radar shows all of the precipitation now east of southern New England. So let's go to the maps. Check out the overnight forecast. Your first look at tonight's weather shows the clouds that are overhead right now scooting out to the northeast, leaving us with generally fair weather by tomorrow morning. And temperatures in the area tomorrow morning, overnight lows. We're looking for readings from the low 40s in the Berkshires to the mid and upper 40s on Connecticut shoreline, 44 in Hartford, 47 in New Haven. A bright, sunshiny day tomorrow. But with breezy conditions, gusty winds, temperatures are going to feel cool, and actually they are going to be kind of cool. Low to mid-50s tomorrow most places, mid to upper 50s on the shoreline. Don, that's our first look at uh, the weather from the Channel 3 New England Weather Service, but we'll have full details coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Hilton, we'll be asking you to look ahead to the weekend. There's a whole lot more coming up here on the Night Beat. Find out why Prudential will be paying a high price for some deals that didn't work out in the 1980s. The scene of the world's worst nuclear disaster may soon be back online. We'll find out why. Scott Burrell trades in his Husky Blue for Hornet Teal. Highlights of his Hartford Pro debut coming up later in sports. And a controversial comic has folks in Germany seeing red. Check it all out next on the Night Beat. Subaru announces a $1,500 cash rebate on the new Impreza L four-door sedan. Retail $12,999, now $11,499. Never before has Subaru offered all these luxury features at such a low price. Driver's airbag, air conditioning, four-wheel passive steering, power windows and door locks, AM FM stereo radio, tilt steering wheel, tinted glass, rear defrost, and much more. Subaru value with all these luxury features, now only $11,499 for a limited time. See your Subaru dealer now. To soar with eagles, be the best. 
to win the industry's highest awards for quality, commit to excellence, provide superior quality products, and have the strength to offer them at more than 12,500 locations nationwide, more than any other major brand. Discover for yourself the difference quality can make. Fly with the new superpower. By Lean's Best of the Northeast Sale. Save 20 to 50% on the best fashions and accessories for you, your family, and the home. Storewide savings starting tomorrow, only at By Lean's. Wilson, your report on health plans. Only Blue has all the plans for me. Only Blue can please our employees. Boom, 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 boom. Only Blue alone. It's my dream come true. My one and only blue. He watched a neighbor shoot his dog. I kept on yelling to not shoot her again, but he still did. Now his best friend is gone forever. Inside Edition with a story you'll never forget. You know how some people get so close to their pet, it's like part of them. A part of little Kenny's life taken away in front of his eyes. He said, I'm going to remember Carrie. How did a neighbor get away with killing a little boy's dog? Watch Inside Edition. Tomorrow at 7 only on Channel 3. A comic book featuring the life and times of Adolf Hitler is now verboten in Germany. It was designed as a teaching tool to help German high school students understand his rise to power and how it destroyed Germany. But after three years of testing the Hitler comic with small groups of students, authorities have pulled it out of the schools. They're afraid the colorful pictures and the posters made from them seem to glorify rather than vilify the memory of Adolf Hitler. Haiti is beginning to feel the effects of the international oil and arms embargo now in its fourth day. That's one of the stories making news around the world tonight. As the Navy brought in new guided missile ships to enforce the embargo, long lines formed at gas stations that still had supplies, and there's growing doubt that ousted President John Bertrand Aristide can return by the October 30th deadline because military leaders want new concessions before they step down. We have made all the concessions we could have made. Now, there will be no more negotiations until the other side starts respecting its own commitments. In other developments tonight, there are unconfirmed reports of new threats to U.S. citizens and word that a pro Aristide deputy earlier feared kidnapped is now said to be in hiding. A partial American pullout is underway in Somalia. 400 U.S. Army Rangers are heading home tonight. The Clinton administration says they're no longer needed now that U.S. Marines with the same qualifications are arriving in Somalia. The pullout is widely viewed as an official indication that the U.S. is giving up its one-time goal of capturing Somali warlord Mohamed Idid, who is now indicating he may be ready to negotiate. Ukrainian lawmakers have decided to keep open the Chernobyl nuclear power station, the site of the world's worst nuclear accident in 1986. They have also lifted a moratorium on building new plants. The moves are apparently in response to a severe energy shortage. On the Nightbeat Business Watch, Stanley cuts a deal to keep its jobs in New Britain and modernize its facilities there. The state and the city will finance most of the $6.7 million cost of renovations. UTC reporting an increase of nearly 23% in third quarter profits, the result of an aggressive restructuring program that calls for thousands of job cuts and some plant reductions by the end of 1995. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones reacting to a steep slide in bond prices today, giving back nearly all of yesterday's advance, closing at 36.36 in active trading of 287 million shares. Well, what are the chances of rain on its way out of town? Hilton's got the answer straight ahead. And a decade of bad investments will cost Prudential dearly. The payoff next when the night beat continues. Stay with us. Introducing the first and only business calling plan that changes as fast as your business. Introducing the most for business from Sprint. The plan that instantly adapts to your changing calling patterns. So you're guaranteed automatic savings every month. So call now to get the most for business. Because when it comes to business, you better be able to change. After all, it's a jungle out there. There's a lot about the new Gallant that you may not know. Like being first in its class with dual airbags, standard. In fact, 
After Automobile Magazine scrutinized the all-new Gallant, it said it may be the most car per dollar in its class. A class, we might add, that includes Accord and Camry. The all-new 1994 Mitsubishi Gallant. Lease a new Gallant S now for just $1,000 down and $1.99 a month. Unclaimed freight. It's a four-day furniture riot. We're breaking prices on thousands of brand-name items for every room in your house. Truckloads of sofas, bedrooms, dining rooms, and mattresses all reduced. Sofa and love seats worth $3.99, now $2.99. Jumbo chaise recliner was $1.49, now $99. Hundreds of living room tables worth $69, now $39. And for four days only, no payments, no finance charges till February 94. Hurry while truckloads last. The four-day furniture riot ends Sunday at your furniture factory outlet. Unclaimed freight. <laughs> When I grow up, I'm going to play football at Notre Dame. He had the courage to dream. And someday I'm going to come out of that tunnel and I'm going to run onto this field. The power to believe. My son's going to Notre Dame! The strength to fight. You don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. You can do it, Rudy. From the creators of Hoosiers. You ready, Chair? I've been ready for this my whole life. This is the unforgettable true story of Rudy. Rated PG. Starts tomorrow at a theater near you. Burlington Coat Factory has thousands of coats, not hundreds, thousands. Look at these low prices. Yeah, I know. How do they do it? Why go anyplace else? I wouldn't. Eyewitness News continuing on the night beat with a multi-million dollar settlement claiming a big piece of the rock. Prudential Securities tonight attempting to settle up from the backlash of a 1980s boom in limited partnership deals. CBS News business correspondent Ray Brady reports the company has agreed to a settlement in excess of $300 million. The government's Securities and Exchange Commission, the watchdog of Wall Street, announced that Prudential Securities agreed to pay millions in fines and set up a fund to pay $330 million to investors who charged they were deceived. Today's settlement is by far the largest monetary settlement in a retail securities fraud case. The giant brokerage firm owned by the company that calls itself The Rock took in seven and three quarter billion dollars by urging 250,000 investors to put their money in oil wells and other limited partnerships. We invested in the rock, and we got rock and roll. Many of the investors were like Jan Sitko and his wife, confined to a wheelchair. He was told their $400,000 investment was safe, secure. In fact, it was high risk. You know, one day you're worth a lot of money, and the next day nothing is listed in your statement. Catherine Cato invested all the money inherited from her father, hoping the return would pay for her mother's nursing home bills. I have lost my inheritance completely. Who's paying her mother's nursing home bills now? Medicaid, not Prudential. Prudential's marketing and sales efforts were rife with misrepresentations and were often directed at investors who were wholly unsuitable for the products. Prudential admits no guilt. Its head man was apologetic. There's no question but that we made some mistakes uh, in the 1980s. Uh, and what we want to do is make up for those mistakes now. But those mistakes could cost Prudential Securities far more than $330 million. The SEC says that's only a down payment. And lawyers for some investors say they'll sue the big brokerage for a lot more money. Ray Brady, CBS News, Washington. Well, we got a pretty healthy down payment of rain today. How we much did we get, Hilton? Nearly eight tenths, yeah. 79 hundredths of an inch. You know, with that rain drumming on the roof, really prompted some good sleeping and good dreams last night. I, I dreamed that two baseball teams scored 27 runs last night. Could you believe it? It was 29. Oh, 29. Well, there you have it. Well, I knew I was dreaming. <laughs> These scenes in North Haven where we had wet streets early in the evening, now things are beginning to dry out. And guess what? It's going to be dry and breezy all day tomorrow. Good rain, though, almost an inch, 79 hundredths. 56 degrees at the Channel 3 New England Weather Service in Hartford, 59 in New Haven. Dew points beginning to fall off, the weather front moving through New England. Air will begin to dry out overnight. Northerly winds in Hartford and westerly winds in New Haven. Let's check live. Connecticut Doppler 3 radar. We have it set on the 150 mile range. And you notice the wet weather that earlier this evening was right over Connecticut has pushed eastward, pushed east out of the area by a strong cold front that is just now moving into our area. Some pretty good showers along this front and even some thunderstorms 
our lightning detectors saw some lightning strikes over Long Island Sound just east of Montauk Point this evening. Well, our radar echoes in motion as we catch them moving through the area. Boy, it rained with cats and dogs in Philadelphia until just before the game tonight. Rain getting out of the way just in time for the game. And you see the weather system sweeping through our area, leading for, toward some dry weather for tomorrow. And if you're going to get out this weekend, I'll just update you on uh, bright spots, northwest hills and parts of the central Connecticut River Valley. Some bright foliage around, but I want to warn you that rain knocked down a lot of leaves tonight. So wet streets plus wet leaves overnight, if there are puddles around them all morning with leaves on them, you're going to find, you're going to find some slippery spots. So be careful when you drive to work tomorrow morning. Temperatures in the 50s, 56 right now at Channel 3, 53 at Bradley International Airport. 52 degrees in Springfield. Getting cool in northern New England already, 48 degrees in Brattleboro. On the shoreline, we have temperatures, well, just depending on where you are, 59 in New Haven, 61 in Bridgeport. Winds switching around to the west on the shoreline and already out of the north inland. And in the far northern New England, low 50s, upper 40s, out to the west of us where the cool air really is uh, setting up shop. Temperatures in the low to mid, in the mid to upper 40s right now. Look at that, 45 degrees in Binghamton, New York at this hour. Well, tomorrow we'll have temperatures only in the 50s with a good strong west or northwest wind. So it'll feel breezy and chilly, and the temperatures will be kind of on the cool side. So you'll need a jacket tomorrow. And then for Saturday, well, we continue to have cool air invading the northeastern part of the country. So Saturday, the weekend, going to start off feeling a good deal like autumn. Cool weather sweeping in during the day tomorrow. Dry weather throughout uh, Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. Here's your forecast. For the rest of the nighttime hours, we're calling for clearing weather, 40 to 45 inland, becoming breezy throughout the area, 43 to 48 on the shoreline. Then for tomorrow, sunny skies, breezy conditions, 50s inland, 55 to 60 on the shoreline. And for tomorrow night, clear and cold inland, just chilly on the shore, 30s inland, near 40 on the shore for tomorrow night. And then for Saturday, bright way to begin the weekend, 55 to 60 with sunny skies. So the five-day planner, plan on some dry weather for a while. We've had uh, well over an inch of rain the last several days, and now for the next few, few days, it looks like the weather is going to be dry and cool, beginning to warm up Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, though. But Friday and Saturday, well, Don, we'll need a jacket when we get out and rake those leaves. All right, sound like some welcome changes. Thanks, Hilton. There's new hope tonight for the treatment of obesity. The story tops our Two Year Health Nightbeat report. A new study says two widely used prescription diet pills, when taken together, can produce dramatic weight loss and reduce high blood pressure, sugar, and cholesterol to normal levels. The combination of fenfluramine and fetamine helped patients shed an average of 37 pounds after nine months. But more study is needed to determine if the drugs over the long term are safe. Hospitals, nursing homes, and restaurants could soon be cooking with pasteurized eggs. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says replacing raw eggs with pasteurized ones will go a long way toward preventing outbreaks of salmonella. Pasteurized egg products do not contain the salmonella bacteria. Well, the Nightbeat Newsreel is right around the corner. We'll meet a group that's taking their sweet sound of success to a whole new level. And we'll find out why the World Series is going to six games. David. I'll tell you one thing. That Philly team, heart courage, yeah. all those things. I'll remember this team for a long time. Unpredictable. Unpredictable for sure. How'd they do tonight? Well, you watched it just fine. Highlights in a minute. Groundbreaking savings. It's the grand opening celebration of Puritan's Lazy Boy Furniture Store in Rocky Hill. See sofas. See bedroom sets. See chairs. See dining rooms. Save on more than just recliners during the grand opening at Puritan's new Lazy Boy store. Announcing your New England Ford dealers value leader selling event where you'll save... Attention, we interrupt to bring you this very important message. Ford just announced the rock-bottom low finance rate of 2.9% for 48 months on all new 93 Ford Escorts. Get 2.9% on the sporty GT, roomy wagon, or a new four-door. 2.9% can mean over 2,800 in total savings, drastically reducing your monthly payments. The great rate is here, but it won't last long. Hurry to your New England Ford dealer today. If you've ever had a problem loading film, you haven't seen the Fuji point-and-shoot cameras. With Fuji's exclusive drop-in loading, 
Just open the camera and drop in the film. It's that simple. Nobody Beats the Wiz has a Fuji camera for every budget, from $29 to $229. And Fuji Color Film in two packs and three packs give you the richest color prints at the best prices. Fuji cameras and Fuji film at Nobody Beats the Wiz. A new way of seeing things. All right, this has to be in L.A. tomorrow. No problem, sir. Express mail from the Postal Service. You're never left in the dark. Yes, your package is in L.A. and will be delivered. Morning. From just $9.95, we track, we trace, we deliver for you. Tonight's Channel 3 Sports is brought to you by Express Mail Overnight Service from your post office. We deliver for you. Isn't it great that it's not tomorrow yet? The Phillies had to win one at home to keep it going. The Blue Jays needed one more in Philly to wrap it up, start their vacations. Well, no vacations for anybody just yet. Philly's got a run in the first inning. Dykstra scored when John Crook drove him in with a ground out. Second inning, Dalton was on third. He had doubled originally. Kevin Stocker with a double down the right field line himself. This made it two to nothing. Those runs would hold up. Eighth inning, key play. First and third, no outs. Henderson, Schilling picked it off to Dalton, to Hollins. They would get pinch runner Kenyatta, and they would get out of the inning with no run. So Kurt Schilling is just what the doctor ordered in Philadelphia. The bullpen was shot. They never got a call tonight. Nobody had to come in. It was all Philadelphia as they win it two to nothing. Great win for Schilling and the Phils. Somebody asked me earlier today whether I like a 15 to 14 game or a two to one game. Uh, I prefer this kind of ball game. How tough will it be going to Toronto and playing sudden death? I didn't know we had sudden death. <laughs> I guess if you're going to die, it might as well be sudden. <laughs> now you know why Letterman wanted him. The Celtics in Hartford for their annual preseason game. By chance, it was Charlotte. By chance, Scott Burrell of UConn fame now plays for them. Not by chance, Harvey was at the game. Scott Burrell returned to the Civic Center for the first time since playing for the University of Connecticut. He started for the Hornets tonight, and all the butterflies flew away when he hit his first shot. It was relaxing. I mean, once you hit that first shot, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about missing the next one because you feel comfortable making one before that. Scott Burrell got the crowd on its feet, but the Celtics stars stole the show in the first half. Check out the one-handed alley-oop by D. Brown. He scored 13 first-quarter points. Celtics lead by two. And Dino Raja, the rookie from Croatia, gives the Celtics a 15-point lead on this basket. Raja had 20 points tonight. I'm just trying my best. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. That's because the Hornets erased the five-point halftime deficit. Alonzo Mourning slams. He had 13. And Johnny Newman's basket here gives Charlotte a 70-68 to lead after three quarters. Down the stretch, Del Curry hits a couple of three-pointers. He finished with 12 tonight. The Hornets erase a 15-point deficit and beat the Celtics 101-98, to making believers out of Boston. Just came out and, uh, you know, really took over the game in the third quarter. Uh, Alonzo was a bit strong. Dale Curry came off the bench and buggies away, fished the ball. And let's not forget Scott Burrell, happy to be one of the Hornets. Yeah, they're nice, they're good guys. They're all fun guys, and, you know, they're exciting to play with. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be playing for Charlotte. At the Civic Center, Harvey Smilovitz, Channel 3 Sports. And in Munich, Germany, the McDonald's Open, and the Phoenix Suns and Mr. Barkley are there. Today, opening the Urban Jungle Gym. It's located at the Olympia Park. There will be a tournament, and Phoenix should win, assuming they take it all as seriously as I think they will, because the NBA players are the best in the world. Remember the, the dream team? I remember bit? Michael Jordan shooting foul shots blindfolded well, and making them. <laughs> Barkley won't do that. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Dave. Straight ahead here on the Night Beat, things are heating up tonight for one local politician. And what do you get when you mix Mel Brooks, Toulouse Lautrec, and Rocky Horror? Try opening night at the Connecticut Opera. We'll check it out in tonight's Night Beat Newsreel coming up next. Start a Chase Better Banking relationship, and you could get a 9.4% no fee credit card, a 5.25% home equity line with no closing costs. Fee wave checking with interest.
$50 just for signing up. Chase Better Banking. Finally, a bank offering a good enough reason to move. Make a change for the better. Stop by or call. Chase Manhattan. Profit from the experience. There's a lot about the new Gallant that you may not know. Like being first in its class with dual airbags, standard. In fact, after Automobile Magazine scrutinized the all-new Gallant, it said it may be the most car per dollar in its class. A class, we might add, that includes Accord and Camry. The all-new 1994 Mitsubishi Gallant. Lease a new Gallant S now for just $1,000 down and $1.99 a month. 1991, Bridgeport, on the ropes. Crime soaring, companies leaving, bankruptcy looming. Then, a change. The people put a leader in the mayor's office. Mayor Joe Gannam is bringing Bridgeport back. In less than two years, Joe Gannam pulled the city out of bankruptcy court, put 80 new cops on the street, stopped companies from leaving, and brought new jobs, bringing fiscal recovery without raising taxes. Tough times call for tough leaders. Re-elect Joe Gannam mayor. Excuse me, could you tell me how to get to Bakersville? Sure. Take 23 north to the M34 east, to I-14 south, and you're there. Thanks. You bet. Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to Bakersville? Head right over those mountains. Thanks. See your New England Jeep and Eagle dealer today. Well, the Nightbeat Newsreel is coming up next. First, let's get a look at some of tomorrow's headlines. Tonight, some of the first wave of U.S. troops returning from Somalia land at Westover Air Force Base tomorrow. The U.S. Treasury Department releases its budget statement for September and a forecast for the rest of 93. The international oil embargo against Haiti enters another day. Warning shots were fired across the bow of one freighter today. Britain, Argentina, France, and the Netherlands are all sending ships to assist the blockade. Well, let's find out what the weather's going to be like for the drive to work tomorrow morning. Hilton standing by. Hilton? Don, first clue is live Connecticut Doppler 3 radar shows the wet weather has pushed off to the west of us. We have our satellite pictures in motion, and uh, they reveal that in the weather system that brought us the rain is now pushing off to the east. A huge storm up in southeastern Canada, though, is going to keep our weather breezy throughout the day tomorrow, so you can plan to start your day with some cool, breezy conditions and expect those conditions to prevail for the rest of the day. So the forecast, 7 o'clock in the morning, 48 degrees in Hartford with bright, sunshiny skies, New Haven, 50 degrees, and breezy or windy in both cities and a whole raft of other towns tomorrow morning when you get up. Windy day, kind of cool tomorrow, Don. All right, thanks, Hilton. Finally tonight, our Nightbeat News Reel. Politicians, civic leaders, and other local celebrities took turns tonight poking some good-natured fun at State Senator William DeBella, commenting on his perfect hair and other uh, elements of his track record, his career in Hartford. The Democrat was the subject of a fundraising roast tonight to benefit Easter Seals. First, it was a metal mosquito. Now, a miniature fire truck is set up in Windsor. Once again, it's the work of local contractor Len Pelton commenting on local conditions. This time, Lon Pelton is urging town leaders to settle their differences about what kind of new fire truck to buy. It's billed as bawdy, outrageous, bold, and sexy. What is it? Well, it's the opener for the 52nd season of the Connecticut Opera and the New England premiere of the opera Bluebeard. If you missed it tonight, you can catch it Friday and Saturday night at 8. Finally, the voices of the Mountain Laurel chapter of the Sweet Adelines will raise their voices to a new high. They are practicing for the International Championships in Indianapolis on November 5th. Thank you, ladies, and thank you for joining us on the Thursday night edition of The Night Beat, The Late Show with David Letterman. Coming up next, his big guest tonight, Bob Newhart. We'll see you back here tomorrow night at our regular time, 11 o'clock on The Night Beat. Good night. Answer Taco Bell. Exacto. The Demo Deal. Buy a burrito supreme. Nachos. And a large drink for one low price.
and get an official Demolition Man movie poster absolutely free. I'm impressed. The supply is limited. The conclusion, get to Taco Bell today. Folks, we're talking Bernie's trade-in sale. This used to be a camcorder, believe it or not. You can get, a, I don't know, $100 toward the purchase of a new camcorder for that. How about uh, this little babe? <laughs> Uh, $25 maybe, trade in. Uh, trade in this thing here, $75, $100, who knows? This was bought here 40 years ago, folks. Isn't it a beauty? Maybe $100. Bucks. Look at this baby right here. Ho -ho, up to $250. Ah! Buy a Whirlpool 22 cubic foot side-by-side -side refrigerator for $10.39, even less with trade in, or a two-speed five-cycle Whirlpool washer for $2.99, even less with trade in, only at Bernie's. If the shoe salesman tells you they'll feel better after they're broken in, you're buying the wrong shoes. Introducing Dockers shoes. They look like Dockers. They fit like Dockers. They feel like Dockers. They're Dockers shoes. The easiest pair of shoes you'll ever buy. Ask for them in your favorite style and color at Filene's.